Hello everybody! So today we will be discussing merchandise transportation. Okay, sometimes uh, a buyer buys merchandise from medyo far away location. So means hindi natin may iwasan. Let's say for example, the buyer is in Manila. Pero yung gusto nilang bilan nasa Cebu or nasa Davao. Or sometimes a company has trusted suppliers na hindi nearby sa kanilang um, place of factories or place of locations or place ng kanilang selling area. So basically, hindi natin talaga may iwasan na nagkakaroon tayo ng merchandise transportation. So pwede siyang transported through land, pwede siyang transported through air or transported through sea. So, yun. Nagkakaroon tayo ng merchandise transportation. Okay. So, today, we will be discussing different terminologies that you need to understand and makakatulong tong mga terminologies na to in recording uh, transactions relative to merchandise transportation and syempre dun din sa buying and selling of goods. Okay, so the first two terms that we need to understand is FOB shipping point at saka FOB destination point. Okay, so tingnan natin mabuti yung diagram. Merong seller on the left side, tapos merong buyer on the right side. And then, kita natin na dine-deliver yung goods. Lagi natin tatandaan, pag FOB shipping point, ang ibig sabihin po ng FOB, free on board. Pag sinabing FOB shipping point, the ownership or the title in the merchandise will pass to the buyer at the point of transit. Ibig sabihin, matatawag ni buyer na kanya na yung merchandise habang nasa biyahe yung merchandise. So, wag naman sana, kunyari, nasa biyahe na yung uh, yung barko na may dala ng merchandise. Pagpalagay natin lumubog. So, sorry na lang kay buyer, siya yung may loss. Kasi naipasa na sa kanya ni seller yung merchandise, yung ownership ng merchandise. Dahil pag FOB shipping point, title will pass to the buyer in transit. Ngayon, ano naman ang kinaibahan niya sa FOB destination or FOB destination point? Pag FOB destination naman, the ownership or the title in the merchandise will only be passed to the buyer kapag ka dumating niya sa kanyang doorstep. So, kung sakali, again, wag naman sana yung barko lumubog habang daladala yung merchandise, sino ang mag incur ng loss doon? Si seller na. Okay? So, always remember, kapag ka FOB shipping point, the ownership of the merchandise will only be passed to the buyer habang nasa transit or nasa biyahe. Nasa biyahe pa lang kanya na. Okay? Pero, pag FOB destination or FOB destination point, matatawag ni buyer na kanya ang merchandise pag dumating na sa kanyang doorstep. When the buyer receives the merchandise, the ownership will be passed to the buyer at FOB destination. So, always remember yung ganong scenarios. Ngayon, i-apply natin dito sa exercise na ito. Who is the owner of the goods by December 31? Bakit by December 31? Nagre-report tayo sa statement of financial position ng inventories, di ba? Kaso hindi natin alam kung kailangan ba isasama na natin to or hindi pa. Atin na ba to o hindi? Dapat ba nasa balance sheet na siya o wala pa? So, depende sa shipping terms kung kaninong accounting records pa mag appear yung mga merchandise. Kay seller pa ba? O kay buyer na? Tignan natin. Number one, goods shipped 
FOB shipping point on December 28 received by the buyer on December 30. Dito wala tayong problema kasi pinadala ni seller kay buyer December 28 na receive naman na ni buyer ng December 30. Whatever the shipping terms, na kay buyer na. So by December 31, sa ating scenario number 1, kay buyer na ang merchandise. Number 2, goods shipped FOB shipping point on December 28, received by the buyer on January 3. Pinadala ni seller December 28, na-receive ni buyer January 3 na. Ibig sabihin, by December 31, nasa biyahe. Ano bang sabi natin pag FOB shipping point habang nasa biyahe ang merchandise kay buyer na ang ownership pag FOB shipping point. So by December 31 sa ating scenario number 2 kay buyer na siya. Number 3, goods shipped FOB destination December 28 received by the buyer on December 30. Okay, ano bang sabi natin pag FOB destination? Matatawag lang ni buyer na kanya na yung merchandise kapag FOB, pag FOB destination, kay buyer na yung merchandise kapag dumating na sa doorstep niya, na-receive niya na, na-deliver na sa kanya. Dito wala tayong problema, na-deliver na sa kanya ng December 30. By December 31, kanya na yon. So, kay buyer. Sa ating scenario number 4 naman, the goods were shipped FOB destination on December 28 pero na-receive ni buyer nung January 3 na. So, kung pinadala ng December 28 pero na-receive na ng January 3, nasa buyer pa siya ng, ah, sorry, nasa biyahe pa siya ng December 31. Anong sabi natin pag FOB destination? Maipapasa lang ang ownership kay buyer pag dumating na sa kanya. E by December 31, nasa biyahe pa eh. So, ang ownership ng merchandise by December 31, na kay seller pa. I hope you understand. So, if you have any questions, Uh, comment them down in the comment section below. Okay, so para mas madali nyong matandaan na ang difference ng FOB shipping point at FOB destination, ganito gagawin natin. Pag FOB shipping point, yung ownership or yung title mapapasa sa buyer at the point of shipping habang nasa biyahe kanya na yon. Malayo pa lang alam niya ng kanya. So always remember, pag FOB shipping point, sabi ni buyer, sa biniling merchandise, Malayo ka pa lang, alam kong akin ka na. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, kapag ka naman po, FOB destination, title is passed to the buyer only when the buyer receives the goods purchase. Kung kailan lang ma-deliver sa kanya, dun niya lang matatawag na kanya yung merchandise. Kaya, pag FOB destination, sabi ni buyer sa biniling merchandise, maghihintay ako hanggang maaari na kitang tawaging akin. Okay. <laughs> So I hope you understand the difference between FOB shipping point and FOB destination. The next two terms that we need to understand is freight prepaid and freight collect. So ganito lang yan. Pag nagre-remit ng bayad sa shipping company or sa freight company, pag freight prepaid, si seller ang nagre-remit ng bayad ng merchandise. Pag freight collect naman, si buyer yung nagre-remit ng bayad sa freight company. Depende na lang, usapan na lang yan ni seller or ni buyer kung talaga bang si seller ang mag incur ng delivery expenses or si buyer ba ang sasagot noon So, pwedeng may i-reimburse si seller kay buyer or may i-reimburse si, sell- si buyer kay seller. So, depende sa usapan nila. But when it comes to the remittance of the payment, it's just two kinds. Freight prepaid, seller. Freight collect, buyer. Ganun lang kasimple. 
Okay, and then another two terms that you need na ito naman po yung mga terms na ginagamit natin sa accounting records. So, mga, account, uh, mga account titles to. Okay, so we have freight in and freight out. Pag freight in po, yan po yung account na ginagamit natin pag si buyer yung nagbabayad ng freight charges. Okay, it is an adjunct account to purchases and thus added as cost of inventory in bringing it to its present location and condition. Okay, uh, ganito po kasi, no? in financial accounting, pagdating nyo po ng college, pag-aaralan nyo po, magkano ba dapat talaga pinepresent ang inventories in the statement of financial position? Just to give you an overview, ganito po yan. No? Uh, hindi po expense ng isang buyer yung ginastos niya sa delivery expense ay sorry sa sa delivery nung inventory no it is added as the cost of inventory pinepresent siya kasama dun sa amount ng inventory bakit hindi daw makakarating ang inventory sa kanilang doorstep kung hindi nila pina-deliver kundi sila gumastos ng delivery kaya it's part of the cost of the asset okay So, freight in is an adjunct account to purchases. Pag sinabing adjunct account, it is an account na ina-add natin sa related account. Kabaliktaran po siya ng contra account. Pagka naman freight out, si seller ang nagbayad ng freight charges sa ang sumagot. So, it is recorded by the seller as an operating expense. Gastos po siya ni seller. So, expense po siya. So, always remember, ang freight in po, si buyer ang nagbabayad ng freight charges. And then, ang treatment po natin sa freight in ay sinasama natin sa cost ng inventory. Kapag ka naman freight out ay si seller ang nagbayad ng freight charges, it is an operating expense of the seller. Let's try these examples. Okay, so what will be the entry for the following? Number one, ABC Company purchased merchandise worth 15,000 with terms 5 over 10 and over 30. And the freight charges paid by the buyer is 3,000. So, debit purchases for 15,000. Debit freight in for 3,000. Credit accounts payable for 15,000. Pero dahil sila yung nagbayad ng freight charges, diretso natin credit cash 3,000. Number two, DEF company sold merchandise priced at eight thousand with terms two over ten and over thirty. Freight charges paid by DEF amounts to two thousand, and then hindi na daw nila yon si singilen kay buyer. So sila na yung bahalang magbayad ng delivery expense on behalf of the buyer. So debit accounts receivable for eight thousand, and then debit freight out or delivery expense per drin po two thousand. Then credit sales for eight thousand, pero dahil sila yung nagbayad nung delivery expense credit cash lang po tayo ng 2,000 I hope you understand our lesson for today and our next lesson is income statement for merchandising operations kapag ka po kayo ay pinanghihinaan ng loob sa accounting or kailangan nyo ng knowledge always pray to God uh, nangako ang Panginoon call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know so Ipanalangin natin sa Panginoon na hingi tayo ng guidance sa Kanya sa pag-aaral natin. Hingi natin sa Panginoon yung wisdom at ibibigay niya ito sa atin. Kasi siya ang nangako. Panghawakan natin ang mga pangako ng Panginoon. Thank you and have a great day.